Okay, so for this lesson, we're going to go over a little bit of some wiring of a very simple, uh, say, oil-fired warm air furnace. So what we got here is a almost kind of like a, a pictorial, you know, blow-up version of some of your most common components that you'll find on a really simple uh, warm air furnace. So up here we have our, our supply, our, our source, our L1 and neutral. So this would signify that this would be a 120 volt circuit. We got a breaker, an emergency switch, fire matic switch, and a service switch. So, you know, the breaker would obviously be in the breaker panel. The emergency switch would be located at the, you know, maybe at the top of the stairs if the furnace was in a basement. Um, a firematic uh, switch is sometimes located on a furnace, sometimes they're not, but they would usually be located maybe like up above the furnace, uh, and particularly maybe like in a basement, uh, like up in the rafters maybe. Uh, or somewhere in that vicinity and then you would have your service switch would be located right at the side of the furnace or boiler or whatever it is that you're working on. You have a fan limit switch over here which is acting as a safety and a control device for our fan. We got a blower fan, cat cell, ignition transformer, burner and obviously a thermostat. So the way we want to wire this is we want to always begin with, you know, your your basic uh, line voltage stuff first. So we're going to come over and we're going to power up our breaker from our, our source, okay? Usually these switches are going to be wired uh, in series with each other, one right after another all the way to our our furnace. So out of our switch we're going to want to come and bring power to one side of our fan limit switch. The fan limit switch is acting as a safety and a control device. So you'll see here that you have a normally closed and a normally open set of contacts. Well, these are temperature actuated switches, even though they're not necessarily drawn like a thermostat like you see here, but in reality, these are temperature actuated switches. This switch is going to open if the furnace gets up to about 200 degrees this switch is going to close once the furnace gets up to about maybe 140, maybe 150 degrees. So this guy over here is actually a safety. This guy is actually going to be used to control our blower fan and turn it on once the furnace reaches a certain temperature. So now I'm going to come out of this side of our switch and I want to bring it down to actually my primary control which is an R8184G. It's one of the simplest of our primary controls that are out on the market. Uh, it's, it's an old style uh, three wire uh, primary control. So B is for our black wire, which is our power, our power wire. Now I'm going to switch. You're going to see that we have a B, an O, and a W. This is a three wire primary control. Our black wire is for our power, white is our neutral, O, which is going to be an orange wire, will actually be what's going to be sent out to control our burner and our ignition transformer. So I'm going to change my color to orange. So out of orange, I am now going to power up my burner motor and I'm also going to power up my ignition transformer. 
Okay, out of my ignition transformer, I want to now bring both of those wires back to my white. But obviously, since I am on a white screen, I can't use white. So I'm going to use, uh, let's just, we'll probably just use a darker gray. How about that? We'll just use this gray color. Okay, so out of my common, I'm going to come out here. I'm going to power up my other side of my primary of my transformer like that. And I'm just going to send that right back to my white. Okay, so that is one control circuit. Okay, so now I also need to bring my white because, again, I have to kind of have a complete path for stuff to work. I need to bring another wire out of my white and I got to bring it back up to my my neutral just like this okay so now what I can do is I can complete some of my other areas of this uh, circuit so I'm going to do my thermostat. You'll see on the uh, primary control, you have a thermostat TT terminal here. This basically just stands for thermostat. Now, some people may ask, like, well, well, how, a thermostat operates off of 24 volts. Where's my my transformer? Well, the transformer is actually inside that primary control. So we're bringing in power, which is not only going to be sending 120 volts out to my burner so that I can spin and my ignition and transformer so that I can ignite the oil, but I'm also going to be sending power to my 24 volt side of my control circuit so that I can power up my thermostat. And that is going to be like this. I'm going to bring power in. I'm just going to change the color to a different color. I'm going to use this color. And it's just going to come right back in. It's like so. Okay, so why is that working? Well, primary control is really nothing more than a relay that is just going to open and close a set of contacts in there to break, make and break my O terminal to turn my burner on and off. So once my thermostat closes, I'm energizing the components inside my primary control, which will now in turn send my 120 volts out to my burner and my ignition transformer. So the last thing I have, or the last two things that I have here, is I have a CAD cell. The CAD cell is nothing more than a flame sensing device. So once my burner lights, my CAD cell will actually see the flame. It will see the light of the flame. And it will send a signal back to the um, primary control saying that the actual burner actually did light. So the CAD cell is really simply wired by two wires that just get connected right back to the FF terminal. So it bases its resistance reading. It, when the flame lights, the resistance of the CAD cell actually drops. And when that happens, it kind of sends that signal back to the primary control and it tells the primary control that the flame actually did light. So that really kind of just takes care of my my primary, it's it's wired. The only thing that I got to take care of is my blower. Okay, so out of my my uh, fan limit switch, I want to power up my other side of my control device here. So remember, this is my temperature actuated switch that's going to close once my furnace reaches about 140, maybe about 150 degrees, that switch will now close and it is now going to send power 
to my blower, and in turn, my blower will turn on. And that just completes that circuit. Okay? So really, sequence of operation of this type of unit is the thermostat has to call for heat. Once that thermostat calls for heat, that contact is made, which will now energize the primary control, telling the primary control that you have a call for heat, which will now send 120 volts out of my O terminal, which is usually going to be an orange wire, and that's going to turn on my burner, my ignition transformer, so that I can now uh, ignite my fuel oil. Once my burner ignites, my CAD cell will sense that light that will now send that signal back to the primary control, telling the primary control that it did indeed light. If the flame does not uh, or if the CAD cell does not sense the flame after probably about 30 seconds of runtime, the ignition, the primary control will lock out, uh, and you'll have to manually reset it to try to have the burner uh, try to light the flame again. But if all goes well and everything is working the way it's supposed to, the CAD cell will see that flame or see the light, which in turn drops in resistance, which will send that signal back to the primary control telling you that the flame indeed actually lit. Once the burner starts to warm up the furnace at approximately 140 degrees, this switch will now close, which will now turn on the blower fan, which will now start to deliver heat into the conditioned space so that you can now begin uh, heating up the home. If the furnace does happen to overheat at approximately, say, about 200 degrees, this switch will open, which will now kill power to your primary control, which will in turn shut off all of your burner components, and the furnace will not operate until the furnace cools down again.